In this video, we will practice finding the end behavior of rational functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.7. If you appreciate this content, please don't forget to hit the like button. For each of the following, determine if the given rational function has a horizontal asymptote. If it does, write the equation of the horizontal asymptote. In previous videos, we learned that if the degree of the denominator is greater, then y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. And that's the situation that we see right here. So yes, there is a horizontal asymptote, and the equation is y equals zero. I won't go through this every time, but the reason why the equation is y equals zero is because the end behavior of a rational function is determined by the leading term of the numerator and the denominator. If you take these together, we have 4x squared over x to the third power. So what's the end behavior of this? Well, the x squared and the x to the third power simplify down to 4 over x. As x approaches infinity, the value of this expression gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero. Number two, in a previous video, we learned that if the numerator and denominator have equal degree, then y equals n over d is the horizontal asymptote, where n and d represent the leading coefficient of the numerator and the denominator. And guess what? That's the situation we find ourselves in here. Degree two, degree two. The degrees are equal. So yes, there will be a horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote will be the ratio of the leading coefficients. That is one divided by two. So y equals one half. If you don't feel like memorizing these rules, you can just focus on the leading terms and ask yourself, what happens to these as x approaches infinity? Well, first of all, this expression simplifies down to, well, it simplifies down to one half because the x squared cancels out. And when you get a constant like that, guess what? That is the horizontal asymptote. In a previous video, we learned that if the degree of the numerator is greater, there is no horizontal asymptote. And that's the situation we have right here. So no, there is no horizontal asymptote. Sometimes, if the degree of the numerator is greater, there's something called a slant asymptote. That's an asymptote, which is a diagonal line. But um, even that only happens when the numerator degree wins by exactly one. So this problem doesn't even have that. Let's do our analysis one more time for kids who prefer not to memorize rules. If you focus on the leading term of the numerator and the denominator, that makes the expression 2x to the fifth power over 7x. So that's what h of x is approaching as x approaches infinity. Um, but this x will cancel out one of these x's, so this is going to approach uh, 2 over 7 x to the fourth power. So as x approaches infinity, um, this goes bigger and bigger and bigger. So this end behavior, this limit, is positive infinity. Even as x approaches negative infinity, the even power would make this a positive number, so no matter what, this is going to approach positive infinity. So that's another way of understanding why there is no horizontal asymptote. It just goes up into the sky. For the next few problems, we will write limit statements for the end behavior. The left end behavior always starts off like this. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of h of x, or whatever the function is. And the right end behavior always starts off the limit as x approaches positive infinity of h of x. We just need to fill in what it is. If there is a horizontal asymptote, then that number will be the end behavior automatically. And that's the case here. As we discussed above, whenever the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, then yes, there is a horizontal asymptote. And that asymptote will just be the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 fourths, 
and the end behavior is approaching three-fourths on the left and the right. Number five, I'm all ready to fill in the left end behavior and the right end behavior. To really know what's going on, we need to know what the leading term of the numerator is and the leading term of the denominator. To figure that out, focus on the leading term of each factor. Uh, if there's an exponent, include that. So I have x squared, and then I have 2x times 4x. So as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, um, what matters is the x squared in the numerator, and the 2x times 4x is 8x squared but the x squared will cancel out, leaving a constant of one over eight. So that is the horizontal asymptote, that is the left and right end behavior. So equals one eighth. Number six, the end behavior depends only on the leading term of the numerator and the denominator. So, as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, this expression approaches 4x squared over x to the third power. But the two x's in the numerator cancel out two of the x's in the denominator. So this expression approaches four over x. So now let's think about the left end behavior. As x approaches negative infinity. Don't write this down, this is invalid math, uh, but this is a useful way to think about it. We have uh, 4 over x becomes 4 divided by negative infinity. This is going to be 0 because as the denominator gets more and more negative, the overall value of the fraction gets closer and closer to 0. Um, think about negative 4 over, sorry, I should say, think about positive 4 over negative 10, and then 4 over negative 100, 4 over negative 1,000, and so on. Can you see how the value of this fraction is getting closer and closer to 0? So the left end behavior will equal zero. The right end behavior will equal zero for the same reason. Or you can just use the memorized rule, which says that if the degree of the denominator is bigger, then the horizontal asymptote is zero, which automatically gives you the left and right end behavior. For the next two problems, we will write a limit statement describing the output values of the following graphs and verbal descriptions of the input values. Number seven says the input values decrease without bound. That means left end behavior, which always starts off like this. On the left side, we see that the function is approaching the horizontal asymptote y equals negative two. So we finish this off by saying the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals negative two. Number eight says the input values increase without bound. So we're talking about the right end behavior. So that'll be the limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x. So as we go to the right, we see that the output values increase without bound. They are approaching this slant asymptote, but that doesn't matter, it's going up and up and up and up as we go to the right. So the limit is positive infinity. Notice that I always use the word is when the limit is an infinity, whereas I use an equal sign when the limit is a number. So you do the same. Number nine, find the horizontal asymptote of each function or explain why it does not exist. So I see that the degree of the denominator is bigger. That means the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero. 
Okay, so for part B, it would be in our best interest to find the leading term of the numerator and the denominator. Focusing on the leading term of each factor and not forgetting this exponent, g of x will be approaching x to the third power times x over x times x, uh, which is x to the fourth power over x squared. There is no horizontal asymptote because the degree of the numerator, which is 4, is greater than the degree of the denominator, which is 2. Number 10. Write the equation of a rational function g where the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x equals 4 fifths. This write in behavior is the horizontal asymptote. So we are writing a rational function that has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 4 fifths. We will have a horizontal asymptote that is equal to a non-zero constant when the degrees are equal in the numerator and the denominator. And 4 and 5 need to be the leading coefficients. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's write g of x equals we're going to have a 4 and a 5 as the leading coefficients. And I can write anything now as long as the degrees are equal. Please make up your own. Don't just copy off of me. But for example, I could write um, x to the third power plus 5x minus 7. I'm just making stuff up. Um, but I'm making the degrees equal. So, whoops. <laughs> Faked myself out there. So, degrees equal. Um, let's see, minus x squared plus 1. All right, what matters is the leading coefficients are 4, four over 5, and the degrees are equal. Again, don't copy mine, make up your own. Number 11, a rare species of insect was discovered in the Amazon rainforest. To protect the species from extinction, entomologists transferred a certain number of insects to a protected area. The population P of the new colony t days after the transfer is given by p of t equals this expression. Part A. Find the y-intercept of p of t. Interpret this value in the context of this problem. The y-intercept of any function is 0 comma p at 0. In other words, uh, plug in 0 and you will get the y-value of the y-intercept. But Mentally, we can see that if we plug in 0 for t, the second term of the numerator and denominator will go to 0. So that will leave us with 50, well, I didn't like that very much, 50 over 2, which equals 25. So the y-intercept is 0, 25. Now it's time to interpret this y-intercept in the context of the problem. What does P of T represent again? Let's see. It is the population of the new colony T days after the transfer. If I were going to say it very awkwardly, I would say zero days after transfer, there are 25 insects. It would be more natural to say something like the new colony begins with the transfer of 25 insects. Part B, find the limit as t approaches infinity of p of t, and interpret your answer in the context of this problem. The limit as t approaches infinity of p of t will be the same as the limit as t approaches infinity of the ratio of the leading terms. So focus on 25t and 0.01t. So the limit of this expression, 25t over 0.01t. This will be the same as the limit of p of t as t approaches infinity. But these t's will cancel out, and we are left with 25 divided by 0.01. Dividing by 0.01 is the same thing as multiplying by 100. So this is going to equal 2,000, 
500. This means that the population will eventually level off at about 2,500 insects. Number 12 is a multiple choice question. The graph of f of x is given by this expression. It has the same end behavior as which of these four expressions? The end behavior of f of x will be determined by the leading terms of the numerator and the denominator. We can discuss the left and right end behavior of f of x by using plus or minus infinity. So the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of f of x will equal the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 4x to the seventh power over negative 2x to the third power. But this will simplify down to negative 2x to the fourth power. So the graph of f of x will have the same end behavior as d. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.